All right, so today we're going to be checking out a request from Mr. Salt 7500. Now this is going to be on SCP-2399, and this is a malfunctioning destroyer. It's an object Keter class, and it's indestructible. Judging by what I saw on the uh, thumbnail art, it's going to be either in Jupiter or, you know, very close to it. And it has, might have something to do with the eye. Um... I, I love that thing about Jupiter. It's just a massive hurricane that's several times larger than the Earth itself. It's, like, ridiculous. Um, I, I have enough of our hurricanes as it is. That's why I moved away from the coast. In any case, though, um, it's, gonna, it's made by the Vulcan. It's going to be spectacular no matter what. It's going to be very, very informative. And... Honestly, I like his I like his lore presentation, but I like when he does the stories as well. Um, the last few that I've seen of stories that he's done have been spectacular. In any case, we're going to go ahead and jump into this, and I love, I absolutely love when I hit this button and that happens. That I, I'm a nerd, and I'm getting technological, and more of a moron. Yes! Let's go! Good morning, everyone. My name is Researcher Miller, and the item number that we're going to be studying today is SCP-2399, Object Class Keter. Special Containment Procedures Due to SCP-2399's location and nature, Physical means of containment are currently impossible. Yeah, I Implanted figure. Implanted Foundation agents in major observatories are to contain footage or images of SCP-2399. An ongoing misinformation campaign is in effect, which <laughs> has thus far been able to completely suppress any knowledge pertaining to SCP-2399 from public awareness. Nice. Foundation satellites in orbit around Jupiter are to maintain constant vigilance of SCP-2399's reconstruction efforts and make all attempts to hinder that process should SCP-2399 reach a minimum of 75% completion. Additionally, a perimeter of long-range electromagnetic jamming satellites barrier array, has been situated in high Jupiter orbit. Any transmissions intercepted by this array are to be summarily decoded and logged. In the event of SCP-2399 surpassing 75% completion or an information breach in the jamming perimeter, necessary Foundation personnel will engage Protocol Legionnaire 5, see Addendum 2399-L5, given its completion by that time. Huh. Description. SCP-2399 is a massive complex mechanical structure currently located in Jupiter's lower atmosphere. Since its visual discovery in 1963, SCP-2399 has been observed to use highly advanced antimatter-based weaponry to create spatial disruptions and devastating atmospheric observable as a large red vortex, commonly known as the Great Red Spot. Can we not make something like this that can do something like this? SCP-2399 appears to be damaged, possibly due to an impact with the moon Io before coming to rest in its current position. SCP-2399 has been observed releasing a multitude of small octopoid repair drones in efforts to repair the damage it has taken. Some of these drones will remain near SCP-2399, while others will patrol nearby moons, or deeper into the gases of Jupiter itself, in search of parts that SCP-2399 is missing. Computer models estimate that SCP-2399 is at 59% completion, with a current rate of 0.78 annually. This rate has increased from an estimated 0.12% in 1970. Despite its damaged state, SCP-2399 seems to possess a limitless power supply, advanced electromagnetic shielding, matter-disrupting weaponry, the ability to repair damage done to itself, and a precise tracking and targeting system. See Addendum 2399-2B. Due to the large difference in technological advancements between the creator of SCP-2399 and our own, for all intents and purposes, SCP-2399 is currently indestructible by human means. In theory, 
SCP-2399 might be left vulnerable by a powerful enough electromagnetic pulse. Unfortunately, this technology does not yet exist. Yay! Since not Circled in red as visible from Barry Unit 2. Yay! Well, the A's are coming, guys! Let's celebrate! The aliens are coming to kill us all! Oh, boy! No. 1971, SCP-2399 has been the recipient of an unending stream of electromagnetic-based communications originating in the Triangulum Galaxy, Tri roughly 3 million light years from Earth. The means of SCP-2399's travel to our solar system and the means of its communications are all unknown. From 1971 to 1985, SCP-2399 continuously received a single coded message which through code breaking and translation efforts appeared to be a command to repair the damage it incurred upon entering our solar system. At this time, the barrier array was established to intercept these messages. This coincided with a period of radio silence from the origin of the communications until 1996 when a different order began transmitting. Okay. The barrier array has thus far prevented SCP-2399 from receiving this command. See Addendum 2399, Comlog. Okay. SCP-2399 Discovery Notes. SCP-2399 was originally observed, albeit unknowingly, by Giovanni Cassini in 1665. The following is taken directly from Cassini's journal on the event, translated from Italian to English. October 8th, 1665. I have observed something extraordinary in the heavens. Last night, as I gazed through my looking glass, I saw what appeared to be a star of great luminance streak through the far reaches of our solar system. I have never recorded an object moving so fast. It had surpassed the outer planets in fewer than two hours. As I watched, by my own two eyes, I saw it slow as it closed on Jupiter, make a sharp turn and disappear into the planet itself. I saw many bursts of light afterwards, but although I continued to peer at it until the sun broke, I saw no additional disturbances in the night sky. I must continue to document these changes and will alert my colleagues when the day is upon me. Hmm. October 15th, 1665. I took. I wonder if they're going to include the meteor shower that hit Jupiter in this SCP. I'd love that. That would be awesome if they included that in this. So far, I'm really enjoying this. With Peter to my observation point last night, but a week from the night I saw the fire rain upon Jupiter in the heavens, he brought along his own looking glass, and together we aimed our view upon the giant. To our surprise, a magnificent change has occurred, where once the distant world showed only bands of color, there is now a great red spot where the star came to rest on the surface of Jupiter. Peter was incredulous, of course, that such an amazing discovery could have taken place before our very eyes. Hmm. I will continue to take note of this. October 18th, 1665. Tonight, as I peered through my looking glass, I swear on my life that I observed what looked to me like explosions and starbursts emanating from our red spot. I fear my mind is playing tricks on me, for there has been no record of such violent outbursts by a heavenly body since the dawn of astronomy. I will consult with Peter on the morrow, and hopefully glean from him some advice on the matter. October 19th, 1665. Peter sees the same as I. As I approached him with my concerns, he leveled the same with me. And through our following discussion, we concluded that it must be a powerful reaction to the falling star I saw upon the first night, and not a product of our own shortcomings. I am left wondering what cataclysmic event must be taking place on our heavenly neighbor. Our work to document this must go on. I really, really, really enjoy how some of these authors put together some of this stuff. Um... The the talk and the, the back and forth with this. Now I'm going to have to go take a look and see if um, when the Eye of Jupiter formed because, well, now I want to know. 
So I'm going to be doing a little bit of research after I finish this video. Um, I do know that it's not going to last forever. I do know that it's a storm and it's going, it has an expiration date. It's so weird to think about though, because ever since I was a kid, there's always been a spot on Jupiter. And one of these days it's going to be gone. And that just seems so weird to me that something so massive could disappear. But it is what it is, guys. Moving on. This is Addendum 2399-2B. At hours on Barrier Unit 53 observed one of SCP-2399's repair drones closing on a piece of debris, quickly determined to be part of a damaged communications array. Because of the nature of this specific component and the ramifications of allowing SCP-2399 to recover it, it was ordered that Barrier Unit 45 fire upon the drone with its onboard concussion batteries. Batteries were discharged. However, the drone appeared undamaged. Yay! Footage obtained by Barrier Unit 53 shows that while the payload in question was launched towards the repair drone, it was destroyed within 5 kilometers of the target by additional charges originating from SCP-2399. <laughs> Command lost contact with Barrier Unit 45 15 seconds after initial discharge. No. With video observations showing that SCP-2399, the resulting spatial anomaly originating, the termination of Barrier Unit 45 by Barrier Units 44, 51, and 55. Under huh. no circumstances are any Barrier Units to further engage SCP-2399 or drones released by SCP-2399. See, that's the thing that I, like, for a lot of movies in Hollywood, I've wanted to see one alien invasion movie that went exactly how it really would go. Because if they could cross light years to get here, there's nothing we can do to stop them. And the, the I, yeah, I do like Independence Day, of course. I like some other movies, but at the same token, it's like, okay, we would be so unrelentingly outmatched, it would surpass Columbus and the Native Americans. It would surpass it by just such an incredible amount. We would be completely defenseless against, against a, a civilization that could go faster than light and reach here in a matter of weeks. It would be a complete and total wash. Uh, and Hollywood says there, oh, you know, they'd use this kind of weapon, that kind of weapon. No, no, no. If they could get here, we're done. And we're completely done, and there's nothing we can do about it. Addendum 2399-2C. Project Gygus. Gygus. After the events of... They're gonna summon a kaiju to go fight it. Let's go! It was decided that necessary force would be authorized to destroy or incapacitate SCP-2399, using Foundation resources as well as resources from 45 nations, notably... A platform, warheads bearing MT payloads, and warheads bearing EMP detonators was launched and placed in orbit around Europa. At hours, with orders from 15 heads of state and 05, 05, 05, 05. Yeah, let's just try to nuke it. This is going to go well. The entire payload of Project Gygus was launched toward SCP-2399. Lovely. Efforts to develop alternative methods of eliminating SCP-2399 are currently underway. Did they huff it like helium? Tell me they huffed it like helium. Please do. This is Addendum 2399-L5. So, SCP-2399. Have you ever sat and wondered? Maybe after you hear about a car accident on a street you were just on, or a bombing in the city you were just visiting, mm. just how lucky you are to be alive. Just how many things have to go right for you to continue to exist. A few seconds too late, a few seconds too early, and somebody reaches for something they dropped, and a busload of people run into another busload of people. Sometimes 
this kind of thing does happen, as Ooh. we've seen far too often. But that's what we're here for. So, they launched a ridiculous amount of nukes at it, and I'm guessing it did absolutely jack shit. Well, we're host. You declared nuclear war against an alien species. Lovely. Or to protect those who can't protect themselves from things that they wouldn't even know to protect themselves from. We can't do it all, though. As many things as we've been able to contain, as many things as we've been able to keep under lock that would threaten to destroy us all, still, far too many remain that we can't do anything about. Whether they're too big, or too fast, or too powerful. Any of these things could blink and wipe humanity from existence. The fact that they haven't done so yet is just luck. SCP-2399, however, is different. Okay. We have little information regarding SCP-2399's motives, origins, and full capabilities. We do not understand how it is capable of communicating over such large distances, or why those who constructed it, if it was in fact constructed, sent it to <coughs> us in the first place. We do not know what would happen if SCP-2399 is able to fully repair itself, or if part of our array would break down and a message would get through. We do not know this, so we must assume the worst. Judging by what we've seen, were SCP-2399 to have reached Earth, it would have led to more timely destruction. But sometimes, humanity gets a little help. Sometimes, something steps in the way of the apocalypse. For us, and for SCP-2399, it was Jupiter. As SCP-2399 began to slow its approach to Earth, Cassini saw what we've been able to ascertain, that SCP-2399 huh. struck Io was damaged and was unable to escape the gravitational pull of Jupiter. Its weapons activated as they were intended, but it was Jupiter that experienced Doomsday, not us. Eventually, though, it's likely that SCP-2399 will resume full functionality and will likely be able to pull away from Jupiter and proceed to its target. As of now, we can keep hurling bombs and EMPs at it all we want, but we've got no indication that any of it will so much as scratch the thing. On the contrary, experience dictates it would do nothing at all. If this were to happen now, we would undoubtedly be destroyed. See, that's the thing too. With it being on Jupiter, the pressure, like now my brain's starting to think like science of this. The pressure, the atmospheric pressure would be so unrelentingly intense the construction methods that made this thing like the materials involved we wouldn't have anything that could scratch it at all not even slightly I, uh, hmm. this thing's actually terrifying considering um, the way that this is being put across and when you consider the nature of what it's in right now and it's still functioning and it's still moving and it's still repairing itself. That is just nuts. Jupiter has given us time for now. SCP-2399 will remain there, reassembling itself while we devise some way to stop it. Like it or not, we're in an arms race with this thing best guesses give us something like 25 years until it is able to hear past our dampening array. Until then, we must seize the opportunity that has been laid before us. Hmm. We must use the time we have been given and not let it be wasted. So, we devise Protocol Legionnaire, one gigantic EMP powered by God knows what, <laughs> followed by a volley of nukes, enough to wipe out our civilization a thousand times over. A blunt plan and simple, and likely futile. Our researchers and researchers around the globe have yet to devise even a way to deliver that kind of pulse, let alone a way to power it. There is no indication whatsoever that we will be able to complete Legionnaire on time, or if it'll do what is intended once it's completed. But we must try. We must do something. 
Even if we have to drain our banks and empty our minds, we must try. Not often do we get a chance to see the swerving bus that will end our lives and step out of the way. Jupiter, unknowingly, has offered us that chance. I suggest we take it. Randall McCallan, Director, Barrier Project, Psych. I'm really enjoying this just because of the way, the nature of this SCP. And it is a monstrous threat. Oh, I love it. Addendum 2399, comm log. Comm log, here we go. All messages logged are to be understood as having repeated themselves continuously until either a new message is logged or a logged instance of radio silence. Hmm. 1971. Unit is damaged. Repair. 1985. Updating orders. Maintain position. Repair. 1985. Period of radio silence. Barrier array is established. 1996. Unit is out of range of target. Proceed to planet number three in system. Coordinates uh. redacted. Repair. 2015. Unit nope. is out of range of target. Proceed to planet three in system. Coordinates redacted. Priority is target. Cease repairs. Okay. On that note, nah. this concludes our lecture for today. Thank you all for listening. Goodbye. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, wait. Does it... All right. So. This is not a malfunctioning destroyer. This is a self-repairing dest destroyer. Um, the title is a little bit misleading on that because it's not malfunctioning. It's trying to complete its mission. Now, here's the thing that I'm really just... I love this kind of stuff where there's no, oh, we have this option, we have that option. The way that this is presented is the most accurate way I can see us like having to deal with an interstellar threat. Meaning, we can't deal with it. Um, I don't like movies where it's... I, I will watch Battlefield Los Angeles... Just because, you know, every once in a while I'm looking for something a little bit, you know, campy. But when I watched it the first time, I was like, we should be far more hosed than even this. We should be so unrelentingly hosed that there is just nothing to be done. We're screwed. We're gone. We're, we're just dust. But by the end of the movie, they're sitting there, you know, firing small arms five five six at it, and it's like, um, oh, no, come on, man, just, 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 just give me a break, just hit me with something heavy. I don't want to limp away from this. So it's refreshing to see them actually take something like this as seriously as the author of this SCP took it, and the Vulcan presented it. Um, this is an interstellar threat that got here. Oh, close to um, th well, over 350 years ago, and it has been repairing itself ever since with you know very little breaks, and eventually is going to come for us, and we don't know how to do anything to stop it. I love it. Um, there are so many SCPs that would make incredible movies, incredible movies. Just the amount of sh the sheer drama, the sheer suspense of it, all every like every aspect of them from the ground up would be a movie that I would actually go to see because it will unless somebody got in there and was like, oh, well, I'll write a character that can, you know, he'll figure it out. No, he won't. We're screwed. We're boned. It's over. <laughs> That's the forty k in me. In any case, um, definitely going to be putting all of the Vulcans links down in the description down below. Um, I'm going to be putting mine down there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry I'm not as animated as I usually am. Uh, it's been a 
it's been a couple of, it's been a, a rough couple of days, so I'm kind of right now, and I'm trying to get back into the groove of things. I didn't have internet for almost 36 hours, so everything's kind of jumbled together right now, and it is what it is, but this is one I really did enjoy. If you liked it, be sure to pop over to the Vulcan's channel, drop a like on his, and if you haven't subscribed to him yet, why haven't you? If you haven't subscribed to me yet, you make me sad. Subscribe, please. In any case, I'm 7,000 subscribers. What kind of nut job am I? In any case, um, once more, all of the Vulcan's links are going to be in the description down below, as well as my own, and I have a Patreon if you guys like to support the channel. I'm out. I'll catch you guys next time. And I have, I actually have, it's funny because I used to have a little tab that I clicked. Now I actually have a button and here we go. Watch this.